everybody welcome back to watch and carry so today's video we're going to uh, mostly be doing a uh, overview and review of the J's and K's uh, lug adapters for the Casio world time uh, these adapters allow you to fit a 22 millimeter strap to the uh, Casio world times uh, 18 millimeter lugs so in the past um, people have tried to put wider straps on this, but have been limited in their options because uh, the lug width here is only 18 millimeters, but most straps that are wider uh, come in 22 millimeter lug widths. So these adapters allow you to combine those two. Uh, this will allow you to put both NATO straps and uh, two-piece straps like you see over here. Now the Casio World Times, uh, are, these are modified by me, so they will look different for you probably, but there are basically two lines of Casio World Times. Uh, you have the AE1200 line, which you see here on the right side, and you have the AE1300 line. Now uh, the 1200 line is known for having that world map. Again, you don't see it here because I've customized this watch and swapped out the internals, but you have the world map, the analog clock in the corner and the main time display. And the AE1300 is really what you see here with the internal masking. It has these triple uh, dials at the top and then the main time display at the bottom. The dimensions on both of these lines of Casios are exactly the same, which means that the internals and the straps between the two models will fit, but that also means that the uh, lug adapters from J's and K's will work with both of those. Okay, we're going to be combining these three watches with uh, this strap. I use this on my Orient at the moment. This is an Orient Defender in cream. So this is 22 millimeters at the lug, so it fits perfectly. But I like the look of this so much on this watch that I wanted to combine this strap with these three watches as well. So this is an Uncle Seiko GL831 rubber strap in OD green. Comes with a stainless steel uh, silver buckle. I also have a Barton brushed steel black buckle that I'm going to combine uh, with these watches as well. So let's start with the J's and K's kit. So this is uh, what you'll get in the mail from them. You'll get your receipt inside, and then you will get a small plastic baggie. And inside that will be everything you need to complete this job. So, let's do this out. Very quick shipping, by the way. I think I ordered this on a Saturday, and I got it on a Wednesday. So, very fast shipping. There's the bag. Okay, you're going to get a spring bar lug tool. You're going to get your adapters, which also thankfully include the spring bars, uh, both the 18 millimeter spring bars and the 22 millimeters, and then a J's and K's sticker. All right, so let's take a look at the tool first. These are capped off to protect the ends. So you have a uh, almost like a punch here which is good for drilled out lugs, will also be needed for the drilled out lugs of the J's and K's adapter. And you have the fork end over here, which will help with the uh, spring bars when you push them in to insert them into the watch. Okay, so really nice that you get that tool. It's one less thing you have to order. Let's take a look at the uh, adapters themselves. Okay, so here they are. So these are metal adapters. Let me get some better lighting here. Okay, right now you're looking at the underside of them. So here are the uh, spring bars that are included with the kit. You can see that the 18 millimeter spring bars have a um, quick release lever on them, which makes inserting them very easy. Okay, and let's get some dimensions out of the way here. So we'll remove this uh, spring bar top first. So just the uh, widest part itself, okay, is going to be about, see, 30, 29, 28. It's just a shy of 27 millimeters wide at its widest part over here. And then it tapers down at its widest part to 25, just about, just shy of 25 millimeters here. And then of course the inner diameter is going to be 22 for this side. Okay, 
In terms of thickness, you're looking at at its thick at its thickest portion, about four millimeters right here at this end, and then it tapers down to where the spring bars are to just about two millimeters. And if you look at the uh, watch inside of this, the outer diameter, you're looking at about 18 millimeters. And of course, the inner diameter will be 18 millimeters to fit the, uh, the Casio World Time cases. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and install these. And then I'm going to go over some of the uh, design features that I really uh, like on these adapters so far. Let's reset the camera here. So we're going to start with the, um, let's start with the uh, silver Casio over here. Okay, so you'll take your watch, turn it to its side, get your spring bars back into place. Okay. Oh, I wanted to say also the, the finish on this. So it's metal, as I mentioned. It's uh, not quite matte and it's not quite polished. It's somewhere in between. But uh, as you can see here, I think it's a good choice in how they finished it off because the, uh, the paint on the uh, Casio World Time case is not quite matte and it's not quite shiny. So it, it really goes well. You know, it'd be one thing to have a matte finish or a, a dull finish on the case and a, a very polished finish on the adapter. I don't think it would go very, very well. Uh, so I think in this case, they've done a great job in trying to match it to the, the looks of the uh, World Time case. Okay, so you will uh, take your adapters, take your watch, flip this over. Okay, uh, what I like to do is take the uh, one, the shorter spring bar and push it all the way to the end. Let's see here if I can focus this a little bit more. Okay, so I've taken the uh, 18 millimeter spring bar. I've pushed the uh, lever all the way to one side and then I'm going to insert that side into one hole of the lug first. Then on the other side, you're going to take your uh, spring bar tool that they give you, go to the fork end and push inward on that spring bar. And then with your other thumb, push down on the adapter and you should hear a click like you just did. And then go ahead and give it a jiggle side to side, up and down to make sure it's secure. Take your fork end and go ahead and just lightly push um, inside to out on that uh, lever to make sure it's really in place. So very, very simple to install. I love how they give this little cutout here in the adapter. Makes putting on the lugs very easy to do and also very important. If you're going to be changing straps quite often on your watches, you know that these world times are not made out of metal at the case. The lugs are made out of resin or plastic. Over time, as you pry uh, in between the spring bar and the, uh, the uh, plastic lug, you can actually chip away at the plastic to the point that the uh, hole becomes exposed and no longer holds the spring bar in place. Uh, so that's the benefit of having this cutout in the adapter is it allows you to uh, insert and remove uh, the, uh, the adapter and change straps without having to do any damage to the, uh, the plastic lugs. So great design cue that they've put in there. Let's go ahead and flip this over. Do the same for the other side. Okay, very simple to do. Okay, so before I put the strap, I want to go over um, some really great attention to detail that they did with this. So let's start at the very top. So first of all, you are keeping your the line contours of the case uh, with this adapter. So if you follow this line here of the case, it goes down into the lug adapter. And look at how seamless that transition is. On a lot of different adapters from different uh, manufacturers, especially those that offer a 3D printed adapters for this watch, they get uh, a little bit wider and chunky at the adapter. So you have this line that gets interrupted by this big bulge 
in the in the material. So J's and K's have done a really great job of minimizing that and almost eliminating it and keeping that that, that line very consistent. So great job on doing that for the uh, top portion. Let's go to the uh, side profile. Okay, again, we have a nice a couple of design lines here, one running this way and another one running this way on the watch. As you run your eye through here, you can see that the adapter maintains that line. There's no bulge like you might find on other adapters. And then here at the bottom, again, it maintains that line pretty well. There's a small bulge here, but uh, it's on the bottom side of the adapter, so not very noticeable which makes it good. And I think the reason why they do that is you have a little bit of a um, concave cutout here in the adapter, which allows this joint to articulate um, between the watch case and the strap. That's actually great. You want a little bit of articulation when it's on your wrist, because as you move your wrist, you um, flex, you extend, you invert, you evert, you're going to be flexing the strap relative to the uh, relative to the case, and it just makes it much more comfortable to wear if you have a little bit of mobility. But you can see that the joint has a little bit of a gap here so that you're not rubbing off the, uh, the finish on, that, uh, on the case of the watch. So great job over there. Let's turn this over to the underside. Okay, again, we have this uh, line running through here. And you can see here they really maintain this, this, uh, this flow line very, very well. Just in general, you want, uh, for my eyes at least, you want to be getting wider to thinner as you go from watch to strap. And to have that line interrupted by a bulky adapter really takes away the streamlined looks. I love that they maintain that uh, in, their, uh, in their design. And then on the inside here of the, uh, the adapter, let me see if I can get it in the light. I might have to actually remove this. You have their logo, J's and K's. I love how that's uh, designed inside the adapter so it's um, there. You know what product you're using, you know the quality you're getting, but it's also discreet that you can hide it with the strap so that way if you want that uh, that uh, really clean look without without any logos, you know, some people remove the logos on their watches and they want it logo free, you can have that with this adapter as well. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, get this fitted to the strap. So I've already done one side of it. Uh, the way you remove the spring bar, uh, the larger spring bar, the 22s, you go to the non-fork side, the punch side, you go to the drilled out lug of the adapter, insert that in and push towards you. Make sure you're aiming the spring bar uh, away from your eyes because if it accidentally shoots out, it could hit you. So we're just gonna push in gently, hold with my other two fingers at the bottom and push out the spring bar like so. So very easy to do. All right, set your spring bars to the side and uh, let's put on this Uncle Seiko strap. So uh, we'll insert uh, one spring bar here and another one through the other side, like that. Okay, to insert the strap in, very simple. Go ahead and push the spring bar to one side and insert that end into one of the drilled out holes of the adapter, and then rest the other spring bar on top of the other side. Take the fork end of your tool, pry inward on that other spring bar, and push the strap in, and then manipulate the strap till you hear a click. There we go. Okay, give it a small tug and a jiggle to make sure it's in place, and repeat for the uh, the other side here. It's just very nice that they give you that tool with the kit makes you know everything very convenient. All right, and let's, uh, let's take a look at our first mod. So I've been wanting to put this strap on this watch for, for a while now, and wow, this looks absolutely great in my opinion. So let's go from the buckle side. Let's do it this way. To the strap, there's the adapter and it just goes so seamless. Look at that flow in that line from here down to the adapter and down to the watch. Okay, it's like a little ramp, really preserves that line very well. So 
for my uh, picky eye, that's that's something that I really like in this design. Okay, again, it transitions well. Let's go to the underside here, see how it looks. Fantastic, just a great job. Let's put this on the wrist so you guys can take a look. By the way, uh, what I'm wearing today is a Casio EFR, I think S108. This is a version that's sold, I think, only in Britain or the UK. Sapphire crystal, quartz movement, nice finish on the face, very, very thin. And I've got this on a Timex MK1 olive leather strap that I've notched down to, I think, 12 millimeters here to make it fit. And a Recher uh, butterfly clasp in brushed silver. It's just a really cool Casio. Uh, available uh, not on Amazon, but you can check for them with a uh, new stock on eBay. Okay, so let's take a look here. Wow, that looks really great. I mean, this case is quite beefy, uh, at least in my opinion. So to be able to put a wider strap with these adapters really just transforms the look. Much more premium feel to the watch than the uh, factory resin bracelet that you get from Casio. I think that looks really good. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, try the adapters and the strap on a different case. So we will show you how to remove these spring bars uh, very easily. So you uh, take your tool, take the fork end, go to this uh, spring bar with the lever, push inward, and then with your opposite finger, push the strap out. So very easy to do. Repeat again. Okay, and let's reinsert here into the uh, gray case. There we go. And that's how it looks on the uh, the gray. Throw this on the wrist again. Very, very nice. Yeah, the... The finish on this uh, adapter, again, it's not polished and shiny, which is great because this gray case has more of a matte finish, so it really just goes very well with the finish on, on this case as well. Very nice. And lastly, let's go with the, uh, actually the one I've been looking forward to the most, the uh, gold or really it's a bronze looking Casio watch. And for this one, I'm going to switch out the uh, the buckle as well. Again, really love the uh, quick release. A spring bar they included this it just really makes that this uh, adapter change very very easy to do I do a lot of adapter changes on my watches both for modifying projects and just for changing up the look of my own collection and I can tell you that uh, it saves a lot of time really having this option saves a ton of time okay there we go and let's uh, remove this buckle so again, I can use my J's and K's fork side of the uh, tool that they give me here. Very easy to do. Okay, 
Again, this one is made by uh, Barton. Take the tongue right there, spring bar through the tongue, push that all the way down, take your buckle, insert, and just like the watch, push down and change, wait for a click, small tug, and there we go. Very nice. Okay, let's give a wrist shot over here. Nice matte brushed finish on that buckle. And I think the black here goes really well with the... Uh, the black that you get on the adapter. Wow, yeah, I think this is my favorite mod so far. It just goes so well with this one. That black buckle adds to the stealth too of the look. Show you what this looks like. Yeah, really, really cool. Very, very happy with uh, with this adapter. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Again, these are the J's and K's 18 millimeter to 22 millimeter uh, strap adapters. Uh, I would recommend that you check out uh, their Instagram page, which is in the description below. There are tons of photos that they post and uh, users have posted as well for these, these products, as well as their many other Casio products that they make. Uh, for example, they make these bull bars that are meant to go over the case and the uh, the display to to protect the uh, the resin glass. Um, and also with a, a bunch of G-Shocks, they do modifications for those as well. So lots of great products, great customer service. They're very in touch with what their customers like and uh, the design cues that their customers ask for. So uh, feel free to send them also a message. Um, and, uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. Any comments or questions, please put it in the description below. And as always, have fun, and we'll see you guys on the next one.